Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting for June 13th, 2018. Can I get a call to order? That's you. Jeez. Excuse me, can we do the Pledge of Allegiance? <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now, no call. That's what I meant. Excuse me. Ms. Torrens? Mr. Blaze? Here. Mr. Hebert? Here. Mr. Crockett? Here. And Ms. Shoup? Here. Sorry, I'm late. You're late. <laughs> for May 9th, 2018. Did everybody have a chance to review the minutes? I make a motion to approve the minutes as written. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Everybody is a voting member tonight as well. And then we have the approval of the written draft decisions for appeals heard on May 9th, 2018, which is the one appeal for Kath Beasley, appeal number 2634. I make a motion we approve as written. Second. All those in favor? It's unanimous. This one. Okay, we'll go right into the appeals. Appeal number 2636, a special exception request by Sherry Fasulo, 37 New Road, Assessor's map, R35, parcel 6. Who do we have representing this evening? Could you please take the podium? Give us your name and address, please. And what you're looking to do. My current address or the address of current. current? Current. I currently live at 891 Sawyer Street in South Portland, Maine. My name is Sherry Fasulo. And what is it you're looking to do this evening? I'm looking to have a one chair hair salon within my existing, well, it'll be within the structure of the building. Um, and it's, I currently do that same type of thing now okay. in South Portland. Okay. And I had to go through the same process there okay. also. Great. So I'm pretty familiar with All right. how this Goes. Quick and easy then. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Longstaff, do you want to make staff comments or any information about the appeal? Sure. So the uh, the applicant owns a single family dwelling that's under currently under construction at the at the address um, 37 New Road. Um, it's in the RF district, rural farm district. Um, the lot and the structures are conforming as far as space and bulk standards of the district. Um, and as the applicant has told you, she is applying for a special set exception home occupation for a hair salon. Um, and um, yeah, that's basically it. Okay. What we'll do is we'll go right into the questions. Mm -hmm. And you can just read your answers that you have there. And then we'll have questions about them or anything from the board. Standards for special exception. The proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhealthy conditions by the reason of sewage disposal emission to the air, water, or other aspects of its design of operation. All proper requirements have been met in regard to wastewater disposal at 37 New Road. An approved site evaluation can be seen on the HHE-200 form, which is provided with this application. Brady A. Frick was the site evaluator who designed the approved sewage disposal system. Okay, so you're on septic or sewer? Um, it is not hooked up to the city. It's our own. Okay, so septic. 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 Okay. septic. Yes. And they. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> they've already deemed that to be sufficient for what you're doing. Yeah. Okay. The proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to the existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. 
Uh, there will be no excess traffic created by the proposed in-home business. I will be working as the only operating hairdresser in the salon. My clients are in my salon on average of two and a half to three and a half hours and beyond per visit. I intend to work less than 30 hours per week. I operate strictly by appointment-based business model only. And so this is just a few clients that you have that are going to be coming? Yeah, and I've been seeing most of them for over 15 years. Okay. So. Roughly how many? Oh, how many? I'm sorry. 60 okay. max okay. over a period of six weeks, and sometimes some of them only see me twice a year. Okay. So, but I don't want any more. I'm quite happy with what I have. And okay. I'm not looking for any new business and just want to maintain what I'm doing. Great. The proposed use will not create public safety problems, which will be substan substantially different from those created by the existing uses in the neighborhood or require a substantially greater degree of municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. An in-home salon does not create any disturbances in my experience over the past 15 years of my operation. Police or fire protection have never been necessary in my experience. The salon lends itself to a very quiet and relaxing atmosphere. Okay. The proposed use will not result in any sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on the water supplies. I think you kind of went over that already a little bit. Yeah. Along with that, I could also like to add that I work with product that is 98.9% .9 organic, so it's more than safe to be going down the drain and being disposed of, whereas most salons do not have that type of thing right now. I'm, I'm advanced beyond my time with that. Okay. Eco-conscious, eco I guess, right? That's always great. The proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. I've attached some photos along with a floor plan for the entire home, including the floor plans for the salon area within the home. The pictures will show the entire home from the outside and its surrounding landscape. There are natural buffers such as bushes, apple trees, and large mature trees in the front of the property. The house sits 300 feet back from New Road, creating a private setting for my home and salon. Thank you. Are you located in a shoreline zone issue? <coughs> so that kind of was a new point for the app because you're not located in a shoreline right. zone. The yeah, applicant has sufficient right title interest in the site of the proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use. I am the mm -hmm. registered owner by proof of the warranty deed that I have provided copies of with this application. I'm the current owner of a similar salon setup, as I said before, in my current home in South Portland. My business name that I operate under right now is The Cutting Edge, and it has been integrated into a residential setting for over 10 years. Okay, thank you. The applicant has sufficient right title, excuse me, the applicant has the technical and financial ability to meet the standards of the section and to comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to subsection F of this section. Yes, I'm a licensed cosmetologist with the state since 1994. I operate, I operate a profitable business and have sufficient backing financially. Because we have a loan for our new property, that also helps. I can set up the salon in accordance to all proper codes and requirements set forth by the city and the state of Maine. Thank you. The proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the generation of noise and hours of operation. I intend on operating less than 30 hours per week. The majority of my appointments are booked during regular working hours. I intend to work between 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. most days. A couple times a week I take appointments after 5 p.m., but I'm always finished by 9 p.m. <clears throat> and I do not intend on ever working beyond five days a week. 
You I've on earned any... my time off. <laughs> <laughs> Do you plan on having any signage or anything for people that are new? Like you said, you want to just keep what you got. I would like people to not know where I am. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> That's it. I'm fully registered with the state, and I just there. Are, I don't want to be any busier than what I am. So. Okay. We don't hear that from business owners <laughs> very often. Not do very you? often. I'm usually looking to get business in. <laughs> yeah, and I'm always like, please no. <laughs> Don't send anybody. <laughs> we have to go into the performance standards as well. Uh-huh. Are those questions? Okay, do you have a copy of what those questions are for the performance standards for a home occupation? Yes, I did get over to Okay, yep. And we're just going to go over those quickly as well. Yep. The occupation or profession shall be carried on wholly within the principal building or within a building accessory thereto. Uh, yes, and the salon is within the main structure of the entire house, which you could see on that other page. Or actually, you can see it on that floor plan also. It's over to the left. Okay. And mm -hmm. the entrance, there's an entrance that's separate for the clients that we've put together, and we've got parking spots over near the three, park, three or four parking, I think four now. Four parking spots available, and then I've got two garage spaces also. Okay. So we're trying to spread it out and make as many spaces as we can possibly fit in there right now. But the sewer, the sewer, the septic, I'm sorry, is closer to where that driveway is. So we're trying to squeeze as much as we can. To yeah, make as long as you have an ample room. turning space, that's what we're looking for. Yeah. The home occupation shall be clearly incidental and secondary to the use of the dwelling unit for residential purposes. Well, as I stated earlier, <laughs> the only reason that I do this is to provide enough money for me to live. I'm not looking to become a millionaire doing this. It's just enough to keep me afloat. Okay. <laughs> and that's where I'm happy. Great. So it's definitely secondary is my point to that. No more than one person who is not a resident of the dwelling unit shall be employed in the home occupation. I think you've pretty much established that. Yeah, I'm going to be the only person in there. And you already stated you don't really care about exterior signage because you're not looking to get new. Correct. Um, so no exterior displays, storage materials, other exterior indication of home occupation or variation from the residential character of the principal building. I have no reason to be putting anything on the exterior of the building whatsoever. It doesn't entail anything with my business. It's not necessary. Okay, great. No nuisance shall be generated, including but not necessarily limited to offensive noise, vibration, smoke, dust, odors, heat, or glare. I require all of these things too, so I'm happy <laughs> to see this on here because I am very quiet. My clients come in and they are looking to relax. and. Definitely, we are, there's no smoke, dust, odors, and as I mentioned before, I'm using organic products and for my own safety and my clients because I would have had to stop working if I'd kept using the other products. Okay. So switching over to that is helpful for everybody. Yeah, that's great. You're being proactive, which is good. Yeah. The traffic generated by such home occupations shall not increase the volume of traffic so as to create a traffic hazard or disturb the residential character of the immediate neighborhood. I think you've kind of addressed that with the trying to get four parking spaces in there in places. Well, and along with the fact that when I have, I have um, blonde hair, if, I don't know if anybody knows in here, but it takes a long time to do it well. And I have a lot of times people might be in there four to five hours at a time. So that's not traffic okay. that's being created, you know. I, I'm not like somebody that's doing barber haircuts that are half hour cuts and people are in and out. My maximum of people that I might see in a day would be like five would be a huge day for me. Okay. So in addition to off street parking provided to meet the normal requirements of the dwelling, adequate off street parking shall be provided for the vehicles of each employee and vehicles with the maximum maximum number of users or customers the home occupation may attract during peak operation hours. I think you've kind of addressed that already with some of your other comments. And she's not more than 20% of the dwelling unit floor area? No, according to the uh, calculations that she provided in her application, 20% um, would be 509 square feet. She's at 480 with the salon area that she's identified. Okay. I think Mr. Wants to finance that one for us. 
Uh, see, unfinished attic and spaces and basements don't apply. Space with an accessory. Are you going to do any retail sales out of the dwelling, like for products? I have sometimes people take a shampoo home or something that might relate to the service that I've performed, but I do not have people that come to my salon to buy product okay. specifically. If it happens, it's in an addition to while they're there. So it's not generating anything extra. So that's just limited to 400 square feet and must be fully enclosed. And I don't think you're going to use all of your space for 80 square feet for sales, so you wouldn't have any place to take care of folks. Yeah, all correct. Right. Went over that. You're not a fisherman or lobster. You don't do motor vehicle repairs. I think that's pretty much it on the standards for home occupation. Questions from the board for the home occupation before we go any further? Here's pretty, pretty straightforward to pick. Okay. All right. Without that, we'll go to public hearing. Anybody from the public wish to speak on this topic? Seeing none, I close the public hearing. Open the questions from the board to the applicant. I, mean, I don't really have any questions. This is a very good application. I appreciate your answers and what you've given. I mean, clearly you know what you're doing here. You said you've done this before. Um, it's a very sufficient answer. Great, thank you. I appreciate that you're only using uh, organic certified material and uh, products for your clients. Also, she stated that um, she intends to work at or less than 30 hours per week. Um, and based on the answer she's provided and the information here in the application, um, it's not really gonna be a traffic increase at all. So uh, that's also good to see. Yeah. Yeah, I think you've done a lot of great things and you're really going in the right Thank you. Direction. We don't. I've been doing this since I so. graduated <laughs> from high school, so I've learned by now, finally. Huh? <laughs> Any other questions from the board on the side? <clears throat> All right. Why don't we get going to the questions for standards and special exceptions with the finding effects? The proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhealthful conditions by reason of sewage disposal emissions to the air, water, or other aspects of its designs. I guess we'll stop down at this end and go right here. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, no, again, I very good answer. I mean, you said you're on a septic, so you're using organic products. I don't think you're going to want to be ruining your own septic <laughs> with products. Um, right. So I think this is a very good, looks good to me. You've also provided um, sewage disposal system design for your septic system, and um, I think that's great. Down the scent? Yeah, I, I mean, looking at the HHG 200, I see that you get it for a four bedroom house and, and a beauty salon, which I think is very proactive of you to actually gone that far in the, in the beginning. So, great job. Thank you. No comments. She's right on. Yeah, I think, I think you've got a lot of things going in the right place, and I think you've addressed anything that I would have to be concerned with this by <clears throat> what you're using for products, as well as what you've already done with the inspection for that. All those in favor of A being met? It's unanimous. B, the proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular pedestrian traffic conditions when added to the existing foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. Stop down at the same end over here, please. No, I mean, again, I think you've provided sufficient answers over again about how the, your, kind of your business runs. And as a woman, I'm familiar. You spend a lot of time at the salon. And um, so you're not going to be having people coming in, coming and going. You know, it's no different than someone having a friend over for a couple hours. Yeah. I agree. You've stated that uh, on average, Clients will be there two and a half to three and a half hours per visit, so clearly that's not going to be really generating a lot of traffic, and also you're going to be operating less than 30 hours per week, at or less. Um, yeah, I mean, I, my mom's had a hair salon for 50 years. I, I've watched her do this. She started off in her house. I, I, everything you've said is consistent with the business that I, that I know, so I have no problem with that. I don't have any comments other than the fact that she's, a, she's got only 10 clients, 10 or 12 clients, and, and they're not going to be showing up every week, so she's not going to have any. In fact, the neighbors probably aren't going to even know you have a business. Mm, probably not. <laughs> Although I've met them and we told do. them, so. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I think that you've addressed this already. You've, you've talked about the additional parking, trying to get four spaces in there, trying to get ease of people not having to back out onto a road mm -hmm. and basically being able to come and go. I don't think you're going to have more than four people there working on them at the same time anyways because that would probably be insane for you to even accomplish. So <laughs> all those in favor of B, me, and Met? Unanimous. C, the proposed use will not create public safety problems, which will be substantially different than those created by the existing uses in the neighborhood or require a substantially greater degree of municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. I'll write down the same end. Well, again, I think this answer kind of ties into what the nature of your business is, and um, you know, I don't think this is going to change anything at all. The fact that it's a resident that you have someone in there. I agree. I uh, mean, uh, no comment down here. She adequately answered the question. Yeah, I mean, I don't think there would be any reason. I mean, you're using safer, safer products and things, so, I mean, I don't think this is going to be anything that's going to have a problem with municipal fire or police protection. It's not, you're, you're not... The only time I've ever area. seen the uh, fire department is their yearly surprise inspection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. All right, all in favor of C being met. It's unanimous. D, the proposed juice will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on water supplies. I think we've covered that, but we can go down it again. Very much so. And again, organic is always good as well. I agree. Um, water supply is left intact because of the organic supply materials. And, um, and again, going back to the approved, approved sewage disposal system, which will help mitigate any fluids going down the drain. Agreed. That's, I think it's great. I agree. Yeah, I think you've, you've taken some steps that we don't normally see, and you've done some great things in addition to doing this before you even get started. So I think you've really addressed this issue quite well. All those in favor of D being met? It's unanimous. E, the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. You've pretty much addressed this saying you don't want people there, really even though you have a beauty salon <laughs> in there. So. We'll go from end to end, what, again? Right, I mean, you've shown some good photos. I mean, you wouldn't know that you have a salon in there, that you have a business in there, or that that extra room was created for the purpose of that. So it really doesn't show any difference at all. Yeah, you've indicated uh, also that the space is going to be 480 feet, which is under the, uh, I believe it's 509 feet that you had said for uh, the maximum required space for the home occupation. But, um, yeah, that's great. Yeah, I mean, I see nothing wrong with the, the style of the home fitting in with everything else and you know, being kind of under the radar for that there's any business going on there. I agree with uh, her comments. And like I stated before, I mean, you're, you're trying to conceal that you even have a business in there, so I don't think you're going to be having anything that's going to be pointed out in that direction. All in favor of E being met? It's unanimous. F. It's not located in a shoreland zone, so we can just vote all in favor of F, considering it's not there. It's unanimous. <laughs> G, the applicant has sufficient right, title, or interest in the site of the proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use. Again, I think this is pretty self-explanatory, but we'll go from end to end as well. Well, I mean, she's provided a copy of her deed, which is sufficient. I agree. She's provided a copy of her deed. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, you've got the deed. You've already told us that you're doing things that people don't know, don't normally do up front, anyways. So you're already addressing some of the issues we could have put on this. All those in favor of GB and Met, it's unanimous. H, the applicant has the technical and financial ability to meet the standards of this section and to comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to subsection five of this section. Is that down the center one? Again, she's demonstrated this has been her career, and she's obviously done very well, and it's nice that you can limit yourself to that, and um, so yes, I believe you've demonstrated that. She stated she's a licensed cosmetologist with State of Maine since 1994. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. all I got. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. I mean, I, I'm fine with that, too. Yeah. So I'm in agreement. Yeah, I mean, you've told us you have the technical and financial ability to do it. You, you want to live the lifestyle you're living. You don't want to actually get more clients. So, I mean, you've already addressed this in a lot of different ways. All those in favor of HB and Met? It's unanimous. 
I, the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the generation of noise and hours of operation. Again, we've already gone over this a little bit, but let's just go from one end to the other. All right, we kind of answered this under other questions, but you don't want to operate outside of normal business hours, and I don't, again, I don't think people are going to really mm -hmm. know that that's what's happening yet. And she's also stated that she has a very uh, set list of clients that come in, you know, uh, for long periods throughout the day, so people will be going in and out and you know, arousing suspicion from the neighbors, I'll say. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the, the biggest you know, concern that would ever be for noise would be a blow dryer, and every, almost every home in, in America has one of those going at some point during the day, so I, I don't see any problem with that. I think she's answered the question very good. Yeah, I mean, even by the pictures, I mean, it's pretty compatible. Like Ms. Sheep said, we've already addressed this in questions before, but we're just right. going through the standards, so we have to just address it as well. All those in favor of IBM met. Motion to approve or deny it. Appeal number 2636. Make a motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Congratulations. Thank you. Welcome. Appeal number 2637, miscellaneous appeal request by Henrique Barbosa, 7 North Street, Assessors Matthew 31, parcel 39A. Who is ever represented? Would you please take the podium and give us your name and where you live and what we're trying to do? Yeah. My name is Leroy Smart. Um, I represent the company that's building the garage for Henrique. Um, I live in Litchfield, 1532 Hollow Road. Great. Mr. Longstaff, comments from staff or any information about this appeal? Sure. Give me a second to shift gears here. Uh, so this is uh, the, the reason that they're uh, here before the Board of Appeals is because uh, uh, Mr. Barbosa owns a single-family dwelling uh, residence that was built in 1950, uh, which is now in the village, uh, town and village center district, uh, <coughs> the family dwellings are not a permitted use in, this, in the uh, town and village center uh, district. Um, so it was made non-conforming by, by our zoning ordinance. So whenever you are faced with a non-conforming use that you want to expand and, and adding a garage or adding another floor or adding, uh, you know, in addition to uh, the house, all of that, those things would be considered an expansion of that non-conforming use. And so the zoning ordinance does pr provide a mechanism for getting approval of a non-conforming use, which would normally not be permitted um, through, this special, uh, through this miscellaneous appeal process. Um, the applicant has already um, uh, been to the planning board for the advisory opinion that's required uh, prior to the zoning board of appeals making a decision and in your staff comments that I think you all would have a copy of, should have a copy of, uh, those comments from the planning board are included in there. Uh, the opinion was generally favorable with some suggested conditions on the approval. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go right into the questions. Same questions. <laughs> The proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhealthy conditions by reason of sewage disposal emissions to the air or water or other aspects of its designs of operation. No, you're just using it just for a residential garage and for some storage. Okay. Proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to the existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. Again, it's just for his family's use, so it's just the proposed use will not create public safety problems, with which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood, or require a substantially greater degree of municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. No, we, as a matter of fact, we've got a bunch of pitches of, you know, other houses that have garages in that neighborhood. So it's just the proposed use not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on water supplies. No. Nope. Proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of the use, proximity of other structures, and density of development. Absolutely. Is this the initial end zone? It's not right now. 
Uh, the applicant has sufficient right, title, or interest in the site of the proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use. Yes, you should have a copy of his deed. Actually, page three, page four, and the pages are kind of all over the place here. Page seven. It says page seven, but it's actually the third page. The yeah, third. yeah. <laughs> There's a couple of page sevens actually, and the page two in between them. So I wouldn't follow along with this. I follow along in your books. That's what I'm asking in the book. Oh, right? in the book. Sorry. Yeah. It's section it's four B, I. page seven ten, and seven uh, six ten and seven ten, section four. Special standards for special exemptions at the bottom, section four, page six, and page seven. Does anybody need me to repeat the questions we already asked? Uh, the applicant has the technical and financial ability to meet the standards of this section and to comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to subsection 5 of this section. Yes. And the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the generation noise and hours of operation. And he's not operating a business out of it. It's just a residential garage. Okay. <laughs> and as I understand it, the new zoning kind of forced the issue on this one where they would have been fine if we hadn't redefined it, but because we redefined it, they can't go where it needs to go, where, where the new guidelines would want it to be, I guess. Right. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? <clears throat> Seems pretty straightforward. Okay. So this, are you placing it where you want it? Yes. Yeah, there's, we don't have a lot of options there. There's quite a bit of ledge on the property, so. And as I understand, you're kind of staying pretty much within the same footprint, just going up a little bit. Yeah. Which we always encourage. That's yeah. a very good thing when you're coming before us. If you're trying to build a monstrosity back there, probably right. not allow <laughs> Yeah. And you are limited based upon what the new guidelines have put in place for you as to what you can do. And you're, you're trying to actually put it where it needs to be. Yes. Yep. Complying as best you can. Yeah, absolutely. Any other questions? Okay, seeing there's no questions, I will open it up to a public hearing. Anybody from the public wish to speak? Seeing none, close the public hearing. I'll open it up for questions to the board if there's any additional, or we can go over the questions and have that findings of fact. Seeing no other questions, let's go into the findings of fact. The proposed use will not create unsanitary, unhealthy conditions by reason of sewage disposal emissions to the air, water, or other aspects of its design of operation. I'll start at the same side and go right the same way. No, I think, I think the applicant said that there's not going to be any bathrooms in there, and so I don't believe the construction of this would create any other issues. The applicant's also stated that's primarily for residential and storage use only, and that it's not meant to be occupied. I see no concerns there. I'm fine with it. Okay, I don't see anything that's going to be affecting emissions, sewage disposal. I mean, you're not going to have a bathroom there. Sometimes we have people come in and put bathrooms in the garages. Oh, yeah. So, Absolutely. Um, no air water quality or anything like that. Sign of operation. All those in favor of A, B, and Matt? It's unanimous. B, the proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to the existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. <laughs> Pretty straightforward, but we'll go back down through. Pretty straightforward is right. Um, you're just building a garage for what the people who already live there, is my understanding, so exactly. it wouldn't create any different situation. You're not adding cars to the cars. You're not adding cars to the dwelling either. So um, whatever, if you didn't have the garage, one or two cars would be there anyways. Exactly. Yeah, I see no change in the traffic. 
I agree with his answer. Yeah, I mean, this is pretty straightforward. I mean, <laughs> you're not going to be putting anything like this um, out there. So all in favor of B being met? It's unanimous. C, the proposed use will not create public safety problems, which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood or require a substantially greater degree of municipal fire police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. Again, it's pretty straightforward, but we'll go down through. Right, you're just adding a garage. You're not actually changing any sort of purpose for what this property is. No. I agree, I have nothing to add. Yeah, I don't see where it's changing anything, really. And from what I understand, the other building was in bad shape anyways, right? It wasn't enough. There was oh, there wasn't, okay. I thought there was, okay. So, I mean, we're not really, I, I can't see that this is doing anything for this as well. I mean, it's pretty, again, straightforward. All in favor, CB met. It's unanimous. D, the proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on the water supplies. I don't think the construction will be creating an issue. Correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, I think so. With, um, uh, and I agree, um, with respect to the comments made by the, um, by the planning board, would you be able to provide some sort of documentation for sedimentation controls that you're going to be putting in? Yeah, you know, there's not going to be a lot of sure. runoff, or usually something like that would be if you were in zero land zoning, but right. you could certainly Right. Do something like that. But. The only reason I mention it is just the you know, the planning board stated yep. it. So if it's some sort of just sort of written how whatever method you're going to do, sure. um, and if you're reusing self fence or something. Along yeah. Along, yeah. Yeah. Something you're writing to the town just so it's documented. So yep. that'd be great. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I don't see a, a real <coughs> elevation elevation in here, but yeah. it doesn't look like there really is. Yeah, there's no water that around. That much going to change. So I I've got no problem with this. I've got no problem. Yeah, I mean, the planning boards had favorable opinions, just suggested some things, and what we would do is basically impose what they would ask. Right. So mm -hmm. you've already heard what they're looking for, so that's what we'd be doing the same. Yeah. So all in favor of D being met? Unanimous. The proposed just be consistent with the existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity of other structures, and density of development. Sorry, Don, so. <clears throat> I would imagine that a garage in a residential neighborhood is pretty consistent with the uses of your neighbors. Yeah. Sounds like it would be pretty compatible with any other residential home in that area. Yes. Agreed. Agreed. I mean, for all the homes that were there and have been there for years, it's probably very, very compatible. The newer ones, it may not be, but I mean, from the character of the neighborhood, I don't see anything here. Right. No. Uh, so E being met, all in favor? It's unanimous. F, not in a shoreland zone, so we can just vote on that. Unanimous. Mm -hmm. The applicant has sufficient right title interest to the site of the proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use. Again, you've given us information on that. I don't think yeah. we have anything we need to address, but let's just go down through. I'm satisfied with the answer he's provided. I agree. Deeds, Deeds here. Looks good. No problem. Yeah, you've proven you have the capability, so I mean, I don't see this as a problem either. So all in favor of GBMF? Unanimous. H. The applicant has the technical and financial ability to meet the standards of this section and comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to subsection 5 of this section. Stop down the what? I mean, I think the applicant has answered and said that he's willing to do whatever, you know, the Board is willing to impose to make this happen. I agree. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I would say is basically whatever the planning board asks for for the conditions, just comply with that. We're good with that. Okay. All in favor of H being met? Unanimous. The proposed use be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to generation of noise and hours of operation. It really is, Nanny. <laughs> Again, a garage in a residential neighborhood. Right. Right, it's pretty straightforward. It's not out of, uh, it's not out of character with the neighborhood for that proposed use. Typical residential use. Same issue. Okay. Unless it's a talking garage, it won't generate any noise. <laughs> All in favor of I being met? Do you know this? Just want to get this on the record. Um, from the planning board, Mr. Fellow stated the board will send a positive advisory opinion to the Board of Appeals with the caveat that sedimentation controls be used and that the second floor will be storage only and not living space. 
So the yeah. second floor cannot be used as living space. It can be storage only. You're fine with that? Yeah. Okay. I would move to approve application number 2637 under the conditions that the owner will not use the garage as a dwelling and will provide written documentation of planned sedimentation control to the town. A second. All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Bill number 2638, limited reduction of yard size by Richard and Julia White, 14 Ashton Street, Assessor's Map U2, Parcel 58. Please state your name, address, and just a brief summary of what you're doing before we get into the questions, or what we're here for. Uh, Walter Wilson from the Design Company, and I'm representing the applicant in their uh, request for a front yard reduction. The property is currently has a garage on the property um, that does not meet the side, rear, or front setbacks on the, of the zone. And the proposal is to remove the existing garage and replace it with a, what they call a carriage house now that meets the CDCR1 zone building design requirements, of which we have already gone through and been approved for that. And uh, the proposed building will be moved in from the rear and from the right side line so that the rear and right side meet the setbacks. However, the depth of the lot is such that the building, the carriage house requires a 40-foot setback in the front yard in this zone, and the current garage is 37 feet, and we're going to be moving it forward three feet, so it will be 34 feet from the front yard. And that's the reason for the request for a six-foot six front yard reduction. Okay, let's go into the questions. The existing building, does everybody have where we are on these? Why are you over them? Are we good? The existing building or structures on the lot for which the limited reduction of yard size is requested were erected prior to July 3rd, 1991, or the lot is a vacant, non conforming lot of record. Uh, the existing garage was built well before 1991, uh, but in my response to you, I went on a little bit about the size of the new garage being the same as the existing garage, and I bring that up only from the standpoint we are not asking for, to make sure you understand, we aren't asking to take the existing garage and move it closer to the street. Mm -hmm. The structure isn't able to be moved. It's an old-fashioned two-by-four on slab garage and we're going to produce a new garage so the variance is not for the existing garage it's for the relocation to put the new garage in yeah this is the one i had confused with the last appeal so thank you for clarifying that i appreciate it the requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same way <coughs> as other similar properties that are utilized in the zoning district uh, the proposed carriage house is a permitted structure in the CDCR1 zone, and the requested, uh, requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other properties are utilized in the zoning district. Thank you. Due to the physical features of the lot and or location of existing structures on the lot, it would be not be practical to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with the current applicable yard size requirements. Uh, the existing garage, like I said, does not meet the setback requirements on the rear side of front yard. The proposed building will meet the rear and side setbacks will need the variance of six feet in the front yard. Due to the lot size and the location of the existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical to construct a new building in conformance with the applicable front yard requirements. You said the building's in disrepair. I'm would, sorry? It wouldn't survive being no, it's two by fours, uh, studs, and, and, and just open ceiling up to the rafters. Um, it's on a flat slab with no frost wall. Okay. So there's no way of moving the structure at all. Okay, thank you. 
The impacts and effects of the enlargement expansion of new building or structure on existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of a building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirements. Yeah, the impacts and effects of the new, of the new building on existing uses will not be substantially different. Uh, the existing garage does not meet the side and rear setbacks, like I said. Uh, the new structure will be located to satisfy the side and rear only the front yard is the question and the reason why we're here. Uh, and the required setback for accessory buildings, like I said, is 40 feet from the street. The existing building is 37 feet, and we plan to be 34 feet. And that enables us to meet the side and rear setbacks that now are not met. Okay. It doesn't appear we're looking to build something in order or anything. Looks like they're just looking to get something there. Okay. The applicant has not commenced construction of the enlargement expansion building or structure for which the limited reduction in yard size is requested so that the Board of Appeals is not considering an after-the-fact application. That's correct. Haven't started. Okay. Do we need to go over these prior to we just need to go over the questions so we don't need to go through these two. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> and did you have anything about this I forgot to ask you? Uh, no, the only comment I would add is that the because the building will be three feet from the property line, or roughly three feet from the property line, it will require fire rate construction that goes to the new structure. But, um, I, I think Mr. that's Wilson, noted on the preliminary yeah, plan. Mr. Wilson is aware of that, so that will be a condition of the permit if, if it's approved here. Okay, thank you. That's good to bring up. Uh, questions from the board? I'm sorry, I, I, I want to understand the setbacks again because it sounds like you're trying to come more into conformance on the side and rear setbacks. Is that correct? Yeah, for a secondary accessory use for a garage carriage house, what the ordinance calls it, you need to have three foot on the side and rear. A house has to be eight foot on the side and 30 feet from the rear. But for a carriage house, you can put it in the corner and the rear of that lot. So we're basically looking at either within the existing envelope or shorter than, except for the one exception that we're looking at. Mm -hmm. Correct. Any other questions in the board? <coughs> yeah. Um, Walter, you keep on referring to this as a garage, isn't it? It's not a garage. The, the this existing is, building this is a living. This is going to be a living unit, right? Uh, no. It's going to be not a living unit, not a dwelling unit. It's what's classified in the ordinance as a carriage house, which can be used either for living space, a garage, combination of the two, uh, but it's not a separate dwelling unit. There is a, a little kitchenette type thing on the first floor, but that's only a sink and a refrigerator type thing. As the, as the doors are open, the sliding glass doors open to the back of the yard where the patio is. So it's gonna serve like an outdoor. Yeah, but you've got a bathroom. I got a half bath. Yes. Sliding glass windows. Yeah. The second floor will have a uh, sleeping loft in it. Mr. Longstaff, could you elaborate on that as to maybe answer? Well, it's it's clearly shown on the plan um, that it contains bathroom facilities. It contains. Also, storage area with an overhead garage door. It does contain a sink. Um, it, it could be used as an accessory dwelling unit if they so chose. It would certainly meet all of the requirements of the accessory dwelling unit. They're using it as overflow living space the same way that you might have a carriage house or additional finished space over a garage that was attached to the house. But there's nothing out of the ordinary for this. Basically, what you're saying is what they're doing is perfectly legal in creating a living space, mm -hmm. basically a rental unit. Um, I'm not saying that it's legal well, if it's a rental well, unit. Right. Yes. Yeah, um, no, you've got you've got an area here. It's got a bathroom, a kitchen. Why isn't that a rental unit? I'm not saying that it would be illegal if it was a rental unit, but I'm not saying it is because they're not applying for it as, as a, an accessory unit. They're only applying for it as additional living space. With What's the difference between an accessory unit? And an accessory unit has certain performance standards. If, they, if they're going to actually rent it out, they would have to meet the accessory mm -hmm. unit standards. They're not, they're not 
asking to rent it out. They're, they're using it. At, the application does not state that that's how they're going to use this, this structure. And that would have to come back before the town? Mm -hmm. um, it would have to come back. It, it would be a town approval. It wouldn't be a board approval. It would be a town approval. Mm -hmm. They would. We have a set of um, performance standards in Section 9 of the ordinance, 9J, uh, for accessory units, which um, you, I think you've all seen, seen them come before, uh, you know, in one form or another. They can't be more than 750 square feet. They can't be rented for any less than 28 consecutive days um, to the same en entity. They've got to be, if it's detached, it's got to be within 100 feet of the dwelling, so on and so forth. Um, that's not what they're applying for here. I, I, I can't, I'm not a mind reader, I don't know how they intend to use it. I can only base my, my, my uh, review on what's in front of me. Should they use it in a way that's not permitted, then that would be a violation and we would pursue that. Walter, does it have heat? It will have heat, probably electric heat. Okay. Do we have the total Wait. square footage? It's 14 by 22. While he's calculating that, I'll mention just in, in the staff comments that. You're an engineer, I thought you knew what you had. <laughs> Engineers know how to use a calculator. <laughs> they should know how to use sunscreen. Instead of real estate, it's. <laughs> um, the, the 308 Thank square feet. Uh, I'll note that in the staff comments that they found it conforming to all character standards except the fact that it's not conforming to lot size. The structure can't meet the 40 foot. Uh, front yard setback um, and I share your concern Ed and one stipulation we can reaffirm in the motion to approve this appeal is that uh, they are not to use it as a rental unit unless they come before the town and meet all the performance standards so we can reaffirm that um, so that in, in the if in, in some circumstance that they do decide to rent that they have to come before the town and make sure that those requirements are met um, otherwise, what's the penalty that they could incur upon themselves, Mr. Longstaff? Death. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the other would be, but, be acceptable to that. Sure. And, yeah. And I yeah, think it's, it's going to probably be a condition. I think, Mr. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Chair. Okay. I think Mr. Wilson probably knows more about his client's intent for this building than I do, and and I would I would probably rely on Mr. Wilson's. Um, uh, you know, thoughts on that, and, and uh, I think it's a, an excellent uh, suggestion to condition it, and if that's, a, if that's acceptable to the applicant, I think that's a good way to kind of, again, reaffirm the use. And, and just to confirm, it was 616 square feet, because we times it by two. Well, it, it's a little less, little because less. you wouldn't count the storage area. Okay, so <laughs> it's within what it's, we're looking for. They told me there would be no math tonight, so I don't know. <laughs> I, I, Mr. Wilson, is your, do your clients understand that yeah, yeah, I think so. I, I don't have any problem with that. And I think it might be if Brian could take out the CDC on one district and read what a carriage house definition is under permitted use, it might clarify some of this thing about is it a rental unit and all this kind of stuff. Uh, there are two types of building you can add to the to a, to a lot of the house. One's an accessory bu storage building, basically up to 12 by 20 foot used for storage. And then the other, they, they call it a carriage house, which could be a two-car garage. It could be a living area, addition to the house. Um, and that's defined on the carriage house. Right at the top of the page, I think, Brian's where it So says. yes, under one-story carriage house, it says a one-story uh, detached building that can serve as a garage, an accessory dwelling unit, or a combination of the two. And I think if we go in here further, um, I'm not sure if it's in the definition section or not, but it's in the definition section of the main ordinance. Um, accessory, yeah, it says accessory units under permitted uses in the coastal residential one district, accessory units subject to the performance standards of section 9J, which is in the, the basic ordinance and it contains many of the, the uh, performance standards that I just read, or uh, I didn't actually read, I went from memory. <laughs> well, you know, you went from memory very well because I was looking at them as you were reading, <laughs> or going from memory, and they were right. So it, it, it kind of, that section refers back to the main ordinance for, for those performance standards. So that, 
It's just kind of a very circular sort of thing. It does permit that use. That use must be permitted only under those performance standards. So, Does that satisfy your question? Sure. Satisfy, well, satisfy your question. I, I, I just have one more question. Sure. Walter, how big is the cottage on that, on that lot? The existing house, you mean? Yeah. Roughly speaking. Um, I don't know. And it's I relatively old, right? Oh, well, yeah, I do. It's relatively it old. It is, um, let me say, I believe it's 23 wide and 37 or 38 feet in depth. What's, going what's up. The, is the lot, is it a 50 by 100 lot? No, the lot's 50 by 60. Really? Yeah, it's 50 by 60. It's one of those smaller lots, and that's the reason you can't set the garage back for there's only 60 foot deep. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was thinking on the last one. That's, we an, had. that's an important point, I think, for the board yeah. to, to note that that's the whole reason that he's here doing this is that the lot is a non standard lot, and therefore the setbacks that were that were uh, created um, with the character district standards can't be met on this because they were designed for a 100 foot deep plot. Any other questions from the board? Seeing none, I'll open it to public hearing. Any other from the public wish to speak? Seeing none, close the public hearing. Why don't we get down through the questions and do our findings of fact. The existing building or structure on the lot for which the limited reduction of yard size is requested were not erected prior to July 3rd, 1991, or the lot is a vacant, non-conforming lot of record. We'll go the same way with this. Well, again, I mean, I think he's shown that they're trying to <coughs> replace an existing building that does not conform because of the zoning ordinances. And um, does it meet that? No. The applicants indicated that the, the existing garage was built prior to July 3rd, 1991. Down here? Um, I, yeah, I, didn't, I, was, I was looking up something, actually. But um, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't see any problem with that. So this was before July 3rd, 91? You clearly stated. Yeah, you clearly stated it was before 1991, so I'm pretty sure that is pretty basic. Um, all in favor of one being met? unanimous. Two, the requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or occupant of the similar property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. There must be more like this down there, correct, Mr. Olmstead? That is similar to this? There, well, there's, there's many, many non-conforming lots and there's many non-conforming structures and there's many non-conforming lots with more than one non-conforming structure on them. Okay. I'm not sure if that answers your question. Yeah, it does. But, yeah, there, there, there are, yeah, more than a handful of those lots. Yep. Start down here again. Well, I think what Mr. Longstaff said was the size of the lot wasn't even what the ordinance was most recently geared toward correct and so I mean you're really dealing with something that you're trying to be similar to the other properties in there but you're limited because of the size of a lot. I concur that a lot of this is caused by the size of the lot <coughs> and um, allowing this uh, as stated in the application um, is to enjoy the property in the same manner as other properties in the same district. Yeah and I, I agree too I mean I think the um, if I remember your, your figures correctly, it sounds like the lot size for this is 40% smaller than what the average lot size of this was designed to work with. And the proposal is for a setback is only 15% of, of a distance of what you know is normally required. So I think it's I think it's perfectly reasonable. Um, and I think it's necessary. Based upon the fact that the lot is uh, so small, um, I agree with his answer. Yeah, I mean, that's why I asked Mr. Longstaff the question. I mean, there's a lot of things that are down there that have a lot of non-conforming structures on them, and we seem to get them at least one every two or three months. But I would agree that this is basically the, the size of the lot that's causing the issue here. All those in favor of two being met? It's unanimous. Three, due to the physical features of the lot and or location of existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable and size requirements. I mean, you've already stated that 
you're trying to stay within the envelope, you're pushing it back from the envelope a little bit, and you're actually unable to move the structure. So we'll just go down and go back through. Well, and again, I think we kind of addressed this at the prior answer. Again, mm -hmm. we're all limited very much by the size of the lot, and that's why you're here. Currently, the, uh, six, the garage doesn't meet the side, rear, or front setbacks, and the new carriage house proposed is going to meet the rear and side, but just not the front, so that is an improvement. I agree that it's an improvement. I think we're getting closer to what we want. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, I mean, that's what I just spoke of before I went back through the questions with everybody here. It's just basically, it's looking better than the old structure, and that's usually what we look for. And it's coming more into conformance. <coughs> All those in favor of three being met. It's unanimous. Four, the impacts and effects of the enlargement and expansion or new building or structure on existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of a building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirements. Talk down here again. Well, again, you're just trying to kind of replace something and make it look better, and the carriage house is an allowed use within that zone. So, yeah. It will certainly conform to other dwellings and houses and units in the neighborhood. And again, it's an improvement. I think it's. Yeah. It's a carriage house for a garage. He just moved it a little bit. Good job, Walter. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the impacts and effects on the enlargement expansion of new building and structure is probably going to be better than what sits there right now, mm -hmm. and it's not going to be substantially different. I mean, you're trying to comply. You're limited to what we've got for guidelines here, and you're limited to the lot. So, I mean, you're definitely trying to improve it, which is always great for us when we look at that. Um, all in favor of four being met? It's unanimous. Five. The applicant has not commenced construction or enlargement expansion building or structure for which the limited reduction of yard size is requested, so that the Board of Appeals is not considered an after the fact application. Pretty sure you said you wouldn't, had not done that, so let's just. This answer is sufficient. I agree. 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 All those in favor of 5 BMF? It's unanimous. If you want to wait, I can drive down there and check and make sure it's. <laughs> I'm not going to wait for you. Um, Motion to approve appeal number 2638 under the condition that the owner will not use the carriage house as a rental unit unless town performance standards are met and confirmed by the town. I think that's fair. Second. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Congratulations. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. board comments. Mr. Longstaff, I had asked just if we could get the Zoning Board of Appeals guidelines for the new guidelines to everybody. Um, I don't know if you'd had a chance to get that yet. Um, I'm, I apologize, I have not, but I can email those okay. to the entire group. I'd like everybody to have it in their packet so you can look at what I'm looking at. And I know some of you have taken the class. A couple of you went to the class last week or the week before for however an effective board meeting, so that's great. One of you you did a really there. good job tonight. One of you will be doing it in six months. So. <laughs> <laughs> any other comments? Do you have any comments, Mr. Longstaff? Uh, no, uh, only that uh, sadly we uh, had to accept um, yes. Mr. Rick Loisel's uh, resignation um, uh, between the last meeting and this meeting. I don't remember the exact date, but um, he, he did come in to uh, express his um, You know his apologies, I guess, for having to feeling like he had to resign. His work uh, schedule is is not what he expected, and it, it is kind of getting into the way. Um, he also expressed that uh, you know he he kind of um, been co coerced, not coerced. That's a bad word. Um, <laughs> encouraged, encouraged to. Uh, to, he, he didn't intend to re-up for the zoning board once he turned out a few years back or a couple of years back and, and he was convinced to, to sign up and, and it, it, wasn't, it wasn't really something that he felt you know, in his heart he wanted to do. So for personal reasons and work-related reasons, he, he tendered his resignation and a uh, very thoughtful um, resignation and we're sad to see him go. Uh, Rick's been a, a great board member. 
Um, he's a great chair as well. And he was a great chair. He and, and, uh, and Jim Stark uh, co-chaired one year. They did a great job. Um, and he's filled in on occasion um, when Mr. Maroon was unable to attend and did a great job with that too. So, um, as, you know, we're all, at least for me, I'm, I'm very sad to see him go, but I wish him very, you know, all the, all the, the best. Um, his new job is, is taxing, I think, to say the least, and challenging, but he seems to be enjoying it. But it, it does get in the way. And, and I know many board members have struggled with their work careers and trying to perform this this duty too, and I certainly appreciate the effort that everybody puts in. And God knows the pay isn't all that good. So, um, uh, but you guys, you know, you do spend it. On, you commit a lot of time to this, and very much appreciate it. And I, I hope that the public understands the commitment that you guys make. It's, you know, it's it's not it's not like there's 40 hours a month that you put into this, but when you have to be here every second it's Wednesday. Awesome. Um, it's it's a commitment, um, and you you guys do you know you do it well, and, and you guys make a lot of sacrifices. I think to be here, and Rick certainly did that too. So that's I, I I would reiterate that he was a very valuable member of the board. He was very knowledgeable. He asked a lot of great questions and found some ways to pull answers out of people that really needed to be pulled. And he did a great job while he was here for everything he did. He will be missed as a member. We. We have one alternate now. We do have an open seat for a permanent board member. Uh, you are, I believe, as of the last town council, if you've gone in and I was sworn, sworn in last night. Okay, you are now the election room. <laughs> <laughs> you are now a voting member, and I think it's great that a couple of board members went to the um, how do we run, run an effective board meeting. That's great because it will definitely lend itself very well going forward, as well as. If people see that there's classes and things, like Mr. Longstaff said on many times, I think there's one in July, I would encourage anybody from the board to go and attend because you get a lot out of it, the town pays for it, and it's really good to do. You'll, have, you'll find a lot of knowledge. So yeah, I, I thank everybody for what they're doing. And some people do put in a lot of hours. I mean, I think the two board members that went to the meeting, it was an all day affair. So you may not be quite far off on your 40 hour thing there with the eight hours they did and the driving they did. So they probably put in about 20 or so. So thank you. But at the same time, I don't want to discourage no. someone. Uh, <laughs> that I, was a problem did, beyond. No, I did not mean to make it sound like it was, you know, that onerous, but at the same time, I just wanted to reiterate that we appreciate the commitment. Um, but certainly we are very interested in having other applicants uh, put your name in the hat to, to be on the board. And, um, the applications are right on, I think, right on the uh, town website, or you can pick one up from Toady Justice at the, uh, the town clerk, and um, we would certainly love to have um, some more applicants to fill these seats. We'd love to have two more seats filled. Yeah. That would be great, because if we don't, as everybody probably knows as of tonight when you came, if one person hadn't showed up, it was a tie, and if it was a tie for a yes or no, it was a no. So I'm glad that everybody did spend time out of their day to come here. and actually be here for this because it was important for our applicants to actually get a fair shake and not have to have a problem of having the a time, you know. So I appreciate it, everybody. I'm usually late, so don't feel that. <laughs> so, okay, they re reeled me in by having me as chair. I got to get here on time, I guess. I was going to say, you've been on time since you've been chair. I know. If I can throw out, too, for, uh, for Rick, he was also a great mentor as well because we sat next to each other when I first started on the board, and he was just a super wealth of knowledge, and he will dearly be missed. Any other questions or comments? Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Um, unanimous. Have a good evening, everyone. Boy, this is a switch. I don't think we've ever gotten out this early since I've been here. <laughs> <laughs> How was that? I know. We were super efficient tonight.